Praise God. Good to be here tonight with all you sweet maple leaf folks. Uh, love your superintendent, his family. Many, you can be seated. Many, many years of love and respect and uh, sweet, sweet spirit here tonight. Hope I don't spoil that. Praise God. Uh, see some of my my old friends here. Uh, Brother Campbell from Florida. I don't see I don't see Brother Surstad, but he's going to be here. I saw him coming in. Good and good friends. Brother Surstad, Brother Dehan. Good to see him again. Brother Garrett. Boy, I wish I could sing like Brother Garrett. I was singing in the shower once and the water turned itself off. Oh, God. Uh, maybe I'll just try to preach like he sings. Thank God. Good to be here with you, sweet folks. And we'll try to be a blessing to you tonight. Uh, Brother King told me I could take my jacket off. Uh, I believe I will. It's a little warmer up here. Uh, we had a camp meeting, our adult camp, and uh, we had to let the side of the tabernacle down, and, and they were uh, wrapping up in blankets in our camp meeting. And that's Kansas. Now, uh, I only got one sermon. Uh, I got different launching pads. I uh, read the scripture over here and take off. And next time I read one over here and take off. But I always wind up with the same, same sermon. So you bear with me this week. We'll try to strengthen you and edify you a little bit with the La Palabra de Dios. Uh, if you habla español, uh, the word of God. Uh, yo quiero predicar. La Palabra de Dios esta noche. Praise God. I want to preach the Word of God tonight. Amen, amen, amen. Now, when Brother Zabala was up here taking that offering, I thought of it. I thought of a preacher. Preacher got up and he said, Folks, he said, uh, uh, he said, well, I, got, I got bad news and good news and more bad news. Now, he said, the bad news is the roof leaks. He said, the good news is we got the money. And he said, the bad news is it's in your pockets. Praise God. That was the bad news. <laughs> well, I know you Maple Leaf folks, you, you like to give. I know that. I know that. I know that. Now, I didn't come up here to straighten you all out. Didn't come up here to tell you what to do. Just, just come up here to have a good time. But, uh, if I, uh, oh God, oh God, I don't know whether I dare say it or not. Uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, I feel better when good men are behind me. And I'm not telling you what to do, but if I was you, I'd just bring the king up here on the platform and set him in a nice easy chair so he could read better for me and be more relaxed. You need to set the king on the throne. I'm uh, not telling you what to do, but you need to set the king on the throne. Right? 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 Oh, now I'm going to have to train you tonight. I can see that. When I say right at home, they say right. Right. They say right. Oh, God, it gets louder and louder and louder. Amen, amen. Now, you don't need to say right if it ain't right. One man said it's right, but it's tight. <laughs> It's right, but it's tight. Sometimes when it's right, it gets a little tight. How many agree with that? You agree with that? Well, so good to be here and promise not to preach past midnight. Preacher got up. Preacher got up and he said, uh, now I tell him at home, I said, uh, we don't preach by the clock. I don't see any clock. At home, we preach by the calendar. And uh, I said that up in Michigan, Brother King, and in Brother Deed's church. And, the second night I got up here, 
here come four men out with a ladder and took the clock down and put up a calendar. <laughs> so uh, they took me at my word. Now, a preacher shaking hands at the back door. He's standing in the pulpit getting ready to preach, and he had a Band-Aid on his chin. He said, folks, he said, uh, uh, when I was shaving this morning, he said, I got my mind on my sermon and I cut my chin. And shaking hands at the back door, a stranger walking out, he said, next time, preacher, he said, keep your mind on your chin and cut your sermon, he said. So, just keep your mind on your chin and cut your sermon. If I see you rubbing your chin, I'll take the hint, I'll take the hint. Praise God. So good to be here, so good to be here. Such a good, good spirit. Now, I'm not a politician, but I'm going to tell you, uh, you hang on to this man's coattail, and he's going to take you through to the glory world. He's doing it right. Turn to your neighbor say, he's doing it right. Praise God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. My, my, my. Now, for a little while, uh, Exodus chapter 40. For a little while. And sound man, be kind to me. It is a man. Thanks God. One time I said, sound man. I looked up. It was a sound person. Nothing sacred anymore. There sat a woman back on the board. I said, oh God. But I see a sound man here tonight. Be kind to me, sound man. That monitor sounds about right. And uh, you can cut them down out there. It won't bother me, but let me hear myself or I'll tear my throat out real good, real good. Uh, uh, Nita, uh, uh, direction, if I preach everything I know tonight, won't be nothing to preach tomorrow night. Praise God. Now, Exodus chapter 40. Good to see you stand in honor to the reading of the Word of God. Verse uh, 33. Chapter 40, verse 33. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, fire was on it by night, sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeyings. You may be seated if you will. Very, very strange sight out here in this desert, desert, barren-looking place uh, an old skin tabernacle with the rough side of the hair turned out. Ugly, ugly, ugly. The church is not attractive from the outside. It's when you get on the inside that the church becomes attractive. Types and shadows of the church. And around this rough, ugly tabernacle made of skins turned outward was two million people encamped around this rough looking thing in the desert and uh, there weren't any cotton fields wasn't any corn fields uh, weren't any farms just barren barren desert and God God brought them out of Egypt, brought them out of sin, uh, brought them through the Red Sea of water baptism, types and shadows of our salvation today in the church today. Brought them through the Red Sea of water baptism, brought them out to Sinai, and the spirit of cloud and the glory of God came down 
on Mount Sinai and out of the cloud came a voice which is typical of our spirit baptism. The death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is our salvation. And God separated this people to Himself. Uh, I, I guess maybe God, we're made in the image of God. That means we're like Him or He's like us, whichever. And I, I, I just believe, now, now this is going to be God's bride. This is going to be His Old Testament wife. This is going to be His bride. And, and uh, he, uh, he, he brought them up to that Red Sea. And you know the story. Here comes Pharaoh's army behind him. And, and uh, the cloud turned around and got between the Israelites and Pharaoh and, and blinded the, uh, the Egyptians. And there was a light to the, to the Israelites. And uh, God let it go on. And then, and then the hero, uh, uh, Moses, raised that rod and the wind began to blow and the water divided. Uh, God was just kind of showing off in front of his bride. <laughs> You ever see a young man just to looking at a uh, one of them silly looking girls, a spindly legged old boy, just to looking at some girl wants to show his muscle. You know, he walk around, his chest sticking out. You know, I, I know you, you you like me. I you, they don't unbutton them buttons now. <laughs> uh, got three hairs on his chest. Just keep them covered up. Just keep them covered up. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to show them three hairs you got on your chest. But anyhow, sticking his chest out and flexing his muscles, trying to impress this girl that uh, he's uh, wanting to marry. And I believe God just impressed that uh, uh, bride of his. I'm, I'm going to show you how powerful I am. And he just divided that Red Sea and brought them across. And Pharaoh's army came down in there. He, he was wanting to separate this Israel, uh, uh, Israel to himself. And he wanted them to be completely dependent upon him. Led them out there where there was no water brought them water from the rock and uh, no food and rained that angelic food down from heaven every morning, wanting them uh, to trust Him. And uh, here they are encamped around this ugly-looking tabernacle with a pillar of a cloud up above it by day and the pillar of a fire at night. And uh, there, was, there was a peace and, and assurance. Uh, that old Israelite uh, in the daytime standing in the door of his tent and looking at that pillar of a cloud as long as that pillar of the cloud was there that meant that God was in the midst of Israel All right. and he ate two uh, you know, couldn't have been eating them abetuelas because they didn't have nothing but manna but uh, he might have had a little tummy ache a little insomnia and get up in the middle of the night walking around in the tent and open the tent door and look out and there's that pillar of fire and a, a peace and assurance was there as long as the Spirit of God was there. And there was peace and tranquility and happiness and God was teaching them some things. But when that cloud lifted, all of a sudden there was a furious amount of activity going on because they started gathering up everything. Here come the Levites putting that tabernacle, getting it ready. And here came the sons of Kohath and run the staves through the rings on the ark and picked it up. And they started following the cloud. And wherever the cloud stopped, that's where they stopped. And where in the cloud, as long as the cloud rested there, they rested there. And God, uh, Romans 8 and 14, God was teaching them some things. Uh, and uh, Paul said it was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Uh, in uh, Romans 8 and 14, I'll give you a little time, Brother uh, King. You're not as fast as my boy is at home, but... Uh, uh, Oh, Lord, for as many as are led by the Spirit for of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of they God. They are the sons of God. Hey, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, now, uh, the leading of the Spirit. Uh, every one of us, uh, many, many years back, before uh, we ever acknowledged or understood or even knew that there was a Spirit of God, that Spirit of God was leading us and drawing us and pulling us uh, uh, when we didn't even know. I, I, Brother King, I was standing in, the, in a gravel street in a country town when I was ten years old. Uh, and they was having a street service up on the corner of the bank building. And, and a woman stood up and began to testify. And the power of God hit that woman. And I saw her face. Uh, and the Spirit of God done something to that little ten-year-old boy that I never forgot. 
The 18 years that I walked in sin after that, I could close my eyes and see that woman's face because that Spirit of God was drawing me and pulling me toward an altar of repentance and pulling me toward a, a, a baptismal uh, baptistry and going to fill me with the Holy Ghost. But I didn't know it was the Spirit of God. I didn't know anything about the Spirit of God. Oh, Lord, I wish I'd have known it would have saved myself 18 years of sorrow if I'd have yielded myself to God right then, but I didn't. I, I'll tell you a little joke. Uh, I was about, uh, I was about 20, uh, 26 now, and I'm working in Omaha, and I signed up, I signed up to go uh, uh, on a foreign contract to work a year and a half in North Africa and French Morocco building air bases. And I, I was working for a construction company, and I was in trouble on every side. Everything was going wrong. And, oh, Lord, man said if it, was, if it had been raining soup, I wouldn't have nothing but a fork in my hand. Everything going wrong. Everything. I, I just thought it was bad luck. I didn't realize the Spirit of God was breaking me and bringing me down and breaking me. And I, I was in trouble. And I was living in a house up on Dodge Street. And they come down to see me off at the airplane. Now I'm leaving for North Africa. Going to be gone a year. And, uh, oh, I got on that airplane. And I sit down. And I lean back. And I said, well, <laughs> nobody knows me. And the man I'm sitting beside turned. He said, you're Leonard Westberg, aren't you? I said, yeah, how would you know? Well, he said, my wife told me. You know what? He was married to the woman that was standing on the corner of that bank building that day. Hey, you can't get away from the Spirit of God. You can't run from God. Oh, Lord have mercy. And the Spirit of God drawing us and, and, and enticing us and coercing us. Boy, those are $4 words, aren't they? I've been reading the dictionary since I've been up here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, uh, didn't even know what the Spirit of God was. But for as many as are led by the Spirit of God... Now, I, I want to set something straight right now. Uh, oh, God, uh, that, uh, that old doctrine, uh, as long as the Spirit of God is leading you, you're a son of God. No, 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 no. Uh, the Spirit of God is leading you, but you're not a son of God till you've been born of the water and of the Spirit. Uh, you're not a son of God till you've been born again. Uh, that Spirit of God is just leading you and drawing you and pulling you to an altar of repentance and water baptism in Jesus' name. And you're not a Son of God till you start talking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Wow, oh, Lord, have mercy. Now, now the Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God. Now, now, oh Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Uh, Oh, Jesus. Uh, 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 give me 1 Corinthians uh, 10 and 12 and 10, Brother King. Uh, 12 and 13. 12 and 13 says, For as many as are baptized, for as many as are... Mm, uh, by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. That's 12 and 13. By one Spirit. By one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. But verse... Verse 10 now is a discerning of spirits. Read, read, Brother Wall. To another, the working of miracles. To Work, another, prophecy. Prophecy. To another, discerning, discerning of, spirits. of spirits. Oh, God. I want to get into that discerning of spirits tonight. In Luke 9 and 55, the, the disciples was walking along with Jesus one day. And, and uh, oh, they had said some things that had stirred the Lord up a little bit. And he said, uh, read, Brother King. But he turned. He turned. And rebuked him. Rebuked him. And said, said, you know not what you manner of spirit you are know of. Know not what manner of spirit you're of. Being able to discern the Spirit of God. Second Corinthians 11 and 2, Brother Ward. Uh, Paul said, um, I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. I have espoused you to one I husband. I have you to one husband. That I might present, present you as a chaste, chaste virgin unto Christ. Christ. But I, I fear, fear lest by, by any, any means, means as the serpent, serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, that your, so your mind could be corrupted, be corrupted from, from the, the simplicity, simplicity that is in Christ. Christ. Oh God, 
have mercy. Ah, uh, oh, uh, read, read on. I said, uh, For if he that oh, cometh God, preacheth uh, another Jesus. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, uh, I, I, I got to hit this. I got to hit it. Oh, I espoused you to one husband. He, not to a divine trinity that don't even exist. He said, I have espoused you to one husband that I might present you as a chaste virgin unto Christ. Oh, God. Oh, God. Go on now. Go on now. Uh, read, 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 read. For if he, he that, that cometh, cometh preacheth, preacheth another, another Jesus, Jesus, whom we have, have not, not preached, preached unto you, or if you receive another spirit. A what? Another spirit. A what? Another spirit. Another spirit. Oh, I want to talk to you a little bit about tonight about the discerning of spirits. There's some folks that claim the Holy Ghost. John, uh, John 16, 13, they claim the Holy Ghost. And they, they slap their makeup on, got a slit skirt clear up to where you don't want to say. And, uh, oh God, oh God, got them ear bobs jangling, got their, uh, look like they've been eating a bloody steak, their mouth is all red, and, and they got chopped off hair, look, look like they was laying out in the yard and a lawnmower went over them. <laughs> My God, and get out and run the aisles and shout and carry on and wave their hands with the rings on them. And, and they think, hey, that's not the Spirit of God. You, you need to be, I'm, I'm going to try to get in your mind what the Spirit of God right. is tonight. My God, my God, read, read. How be it? How be it? When, when He, the, the Spirit, Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. truth. Hey, they don't want truth. If, 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 if you're a group of people that don't want truth, they say we're legalists. Uh, we're legalists. We, we, we believe in the... Oh, I'm, uh, I'm going to hit that later on, but not tonight. My God, my God, they don't have any more of the Spirit of God than a coon hound's got. Uh, they don't love truth. They hate truth. They hate the Bible. Uh, they hate the Word of God. And they want to claim the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God and the Word of God are so closely intertwined, you cannot separate them. If you've got the Spirit of God, you're going to love the Word of God. If you love the Word of God, you're going to have the Spirit of God. Ah. Another Jesus. I'm going to preach in the negative for just a little while. I knew a preacher, I don't mind calling his name. His name was Chester Hensley. Chester Hensley had a had a walk with God. He he had a he had he could operate the gifts of the Spirit. Chester Hensley could lay his hands on you, and God would heal you. I was preaching at a place not long ago, and I called his name, Brother King, and a man come up and said, "My daughter was stone deaf." Said Chester Hensley laid his hands on her, and God opened her ears, and she can hear perfectly today. The man had a walk with God. He, 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 had a, he, he, had a, he had a ministry. He, he, he was a man of God. But the next thing you know, he was picked up for drunk driving. Now the Spirit of God is not going to lead you into a honky-tonk a drinking alcoholic beverages. That, that was not the Spirit of God that led him there. Do I dare say it? Spirit of God ain't going to take you out to the sports stadium either. And the Spirit of God ain't going to set you down in front of a television set either. If you do that, it's not the Spirit of God. Right, 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 right. Oh, the Lord have mercy. Yeah. Next thing you know, not got picked up for drunk driving. Next thing you know, he was in a motel room with a 16-year-old girl. And homosexuals preached his funeral. And the truth is, somewhere along the line, he picked up another spirit and didn't even realize when it happened that he had picked up another spirit. Oh, I knew another man, powerful, powerful, preached us a few week revival, 35, got the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about this talking tongues and you can't find them. I'm talking about good, solid men that were strong and longshoremen and lived for God and died full of the Holy Ghost. Thirty-five of them. That man could preach. He could hold you on the edge of your seat for two hours. And last I knew, he had long hair and was raising sod grass. Wasn't even going to church. Somewhere, 
somewhere another spirit, a discerning of spirits. And I've seen saints of God, and you preachers have too, that come in and they're shouting the victory and running the aisles and praying and reading their Bible and loving God and loving church and loving the preacher. And I've seen them turn into backbiting, preacher-hating reprobates. Somewhere, somewhere another spirit, another spirit got a hold of them. Ephesians 4 and 30, Brother King. I'll keep wanting to call you Ward. Oh, we got a Johnny King down in our church. He's, he's a little darker than your Johnny King. He's a little duskier than your Johnny King. Oh, Jesus. Oh, read, read Brother Ward, King. And grieve not the Holy ah, Spirit now of listen. God. Let me tell you this. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. I want to be careful now. I don't want these boys... I might, I might get the right one. I might get the wrong one. <laughs> oh, God. Come here. We're going to heaven now. And you're a saint and I'm the Holy Ghost. Do you look like... Well, he looks like a saint, yeah. Uh, do I look like the Holy Ghost? Don't answer that. Don't answer it. Uh, he's going to heaven. And I'm the Spirit of God. Said, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Right. And he's walking toward heaven. But, but all of a sudden he gets headed in the wrong direction. And, and, and I, I'm trying to stop him, trying to get him turned around. Say, hey man, you, 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 you're hurting my feelings. You're grieving my spirit. Hey, hey, don't, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. And, and he won't listen to me. And there's a time and a place when, when the Holy Ghost is going to leave you. When you grieve the Holy Spirit of God enough, the Holy Ghost is going to leave you and another spirit is going to come and take you by the hand and lead you where you didn't want to go. You need to understand and be able to discern the spirits. Oh God, Matthew 12 and 43, Brother King, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, walks in dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Read, 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 read. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry, dry places, places seeking, seeking rest, rest and findeth none. none. He said... I will return I will to my house. Return to what? Into my house. Return to who? What? I will return into my house. That unclean spirit has never admitted that, that you're not his house. He said, I'm going back to my house. Mm. That unclean spirit has never admitted that you're not his house any longer. That's right, sir. That's right. Uh. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Entertaining the Spirit. Oh God. Oh God. Prayer and worship and reading the Bible and entertaining the Spirit of God. Keep that Spirit entertained. Oh, the sin of an empty house. That unclean Spirit came back and knocked on the door and the house was empty. Because the Holy Ghost had left. And He took seven other spirits and moved in that house that He was once driven out of. The Spirit of God. Entertaining the Spirit of God. I, 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 Brother King, I, I thought, my God, what happens? What happens? You know, I, I'm, I, I, I don't know about you sweet maple leaf folks. But I'm going to tell you, it's been my experience that getting these teenagers to pray. I said, getting these teenagers to have a prayer life. You know, mom and dad pray and they grow up. Oh, God. I've had them grow up in a godly home, attend the Christian school. We've got all kinds of programs. We've got, we got a girls' club called God's Property. We got another club called Youth of Flame. Uh, we've got a boys apostolic boys club. 
We've got a Christian school. We've got activities upon activities. And grew up, I told a, a, one, a young person the other day, I said, I could understand it if you grew up in the ghetto and your dad was an alcoholic and a drug addict and your mama was a prostitute. I could understand it. But you grew up in a Christian home and a, and a spiritual church and went to a Christian school and all of these programs and look where you are. Because she had not developed a prayer life. Ah, maybe it's the fault of the parents. Hey, you parents ought to make them develop a prayer life. We get up in the morning. I go to the basement. Sister Westbrook goes to the den. Marjorie is out on the sun porch. That little girl don't always want to pray, but we make her pray. Listen, you're not going to make it until you establish a prayer life. You're, you're not going to be able uh, to keep the Holy Ghost unless you learn how to entertain the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to get you a prayer life. I mean for yourself. You've been riding on Mama and Daddy's prayers long enough. You need to get a prayer life of your own. Ah, uh, God... Oh, and I'm not going to be crude and uncouth like I get at home. I'm going to be sweet, these maple leaf folks. I'm going to be sweet. Yeah. I'm going to tell you. Give me, give me Romans 8 and 5. It seemed like, seemed like young ladies and young men, they hit a certain place and their hormones... Get activated. And they they start. Oh God. Oh God. First way you can tell it's her hair. When a woman gets carnal, the first thing you can tell it is her hair. Oh God. Oh Jesus. Reach and get hold that and get me first Corinthians six. And 19 also. I'm talking about spirits now. Now the reason Paul was fighting these spirits in Corinth. I've been to Corinth twice. Corinth was a seaport. And when them sailors hit port, they was looking for one thing, and that's a party. Corinth was full of harlots and prostitutes. And that's why Paul had to write like he did in Corinthians, because he was fighting that spirit of a harlot. Give me First Corinthians six and nineteen. What? What? Know ye, know ye not, not that your, your body is the, the temple of the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost, which is in you? In you. Read, read, read. Which ye have of God? Which ye have of God? And you are not You're your own. Not your own. For you are bought, bought with a the price. price. Therefore, Therefore glorify, glorify God, God in, in your, your body and in, and in your, your spirit. spirit. Which are God's. Which belong to God. Yes. Ooh, when that spirit gets to working on them girls, they get them slinky clothes. And they get them wild hairdos. Paul said in Corinthians, he said, a woman's hair is her glory. You ought to fix your hair for the glory of God, not to seduce her or entice some man. Is that all right, Elder? Is that all right? Glorify God in your body and in your spirit because they both belong to God. Oh, give me Romans 8 and 5 now. For they that are after the flesh, they that are after the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh. Got to mind, got to mind on the things of the flesh. Spend more time in front of the mirror than they do. <laughs> Ooh. Spend more time in front of the mirror fixing their hair than they do on uh, on the knees praying. <laughs> Spend more time on the telephone talking to a boy than they do praying. Is that all right, Elder? Yeah. Come on. Whoa. They that are after the flesh got their mind on the flesh. They're, they're, they're in the spirit of the flesh. Oh, God. Read on, read on. But they that are after the spirit, after the, spirit the things of the spirit. Got their mind on the things of the spirit. Oh, God, have mercy. Oh, Lord, help me now. I, I, I want to be sweet. Oh, help me to be sweet. Oh, God, I'm not home. 
Help me, help me. Oh God. Jesus, Jesus. Spirits! Spirits! Jesus said, you know not what spirit you are of. Oh God, Paul was preaching to them Corinthian women because that spirit of a harlot, that spirit of a harlot kept trying to work on them. That's a spirit of a harlot that will make you wear them tight, slinky clothes uh, and fix your hair to seduce a man. Give me First Timothy 4 and 1, Brother King. Seducing spirits. Uh, read, 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 read. Oh, the Spirit speaketh expressly. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. In the latter days. In the latter times. Some, some shall depart, depart from the faith, faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. devils. Seducing spirits. We're living in a world that is full of seducing spirits. Everywhere you look, every uh, advertised sex, 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 sex. Everywhere you look, that is a seducing spirit. You need to get your mind off the flesh and get your mind on the spirit. Oh, beloved, First John 4 and 1, beloved, believe not every spirit. You don't need to turn. Just trust me. That's what it says. Oh, God, believe not every spirit. Oh, seducing spirits. You know not what spirit you're of. You can't identify the spirits. You can't discern the spirits. My God, I told you before. The Spirit of God is not going to take you out to the sports stadium. The Spirit of God is not going to set you down in front of a television set. The Spirit of God is not going to take you somewhere where you shouldn't go. That's not the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is going to lead you to the prayer room. Spirit of God is going to lead you to church. Spirit of God is going to draw you closer to God. Uh, now, I've been in this a while. Forty-five years ago, last January, I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Forty-five years. And Brother Dudley told me he was preaching somewhere, Brother King, and he said, he said, all of you fathers, all of you men above 40, stand up. Let's try that, shall we? All you men that are above 40, stand up. Come on, everybody knows it anyhow. He said, look at their hair. Look at it. Look at their hair. I mean, what's left of them. <laughs> then he said, sit down. He said, all you boys stand up now. All you young men stand up. Come on, come on, stand up. He said, there really ain't too much difference, is there? Ooh, you know where I'm going. <laughs> then he had... All the women over 40 stand. And then he had all of them. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> then all of them under 40. My God have mercy. I'm talking about spirits. All right. Oh, I thought, what happens? What happens? What, what, what leads up to this? And one day, I believe, you know, uh, I'm not smart and I know... I know I'm ugly, but oh, once in a while, God just drops something in me. Just drops something in me. Oh, Brother King, one time, years ago, when the miniskirts first come out, I was driving a truck, Houston to New Orleans, an 18-wheeler between Houston and New Orleans, and I walking down the street in New Orleans, one of them truck drivers, and them miniskirts had just come out, and boy, he was, uh, he was all eyeballs. And I'm walking along looking at him. I'm disgusted. He, he saw that he was caught. And he turned to him, he said, well, he said, Westburg, he said, what are you going to do? He said, it's everywhere you look. Boy, the Holy Ghost dropped. I said, just start looking up, you won't see it. Just keep looking up. <laughs> hey, there's something, you just need to start looking up. Just keep on looking up and you won't see it. I thought, God, what is it? I believe God spoke to me. Matthew 6 and 33, brother. King, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Now when a saint first prays through, 
All they got their mind on is living for God. All I want to do is come to church. All I want to do is read my Bible. I love the preacher. I love God. I loved everybody. I thought I thought everybody had wings and a halo until I got to sitting in there looking around and I saw something with no halos and no one no wings. And but when, when I first got the Holy Ghost, now and, oh my, on fire, living for God, paying my tithes, and and oh, I loved God and loved the preacher, loved church and loved everybody, and oh, seeking the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God was the first thing in my life. And as long as the kingdom of God is the first thing in your life, that other spirit is not going to mess with you. But when you get a selfish, self-seeking spirit, preachers, dare I, dare I talk about preachers? Do you talk about them up here in the Maple Leaf country? Oh, God. I've seen them on fire and praying and building a church. And then they get a pretty good church going. And all of a sudden, it's self. And they're wanting to make a name for themselves. They want a little, they want a little recognition. They want a few accolades. And so, they start self-seeking. And the moment you start self-seeking is when that other spirit is going to come in on you. As long as you've got a sacrificing spirit and you're given to the kingdom of God and you're praying and you're backing the preacher up and you love God and love the church and the kingdom of God is first, you're going to do fine. But when you start getting selfish and it's cars and houses and clothes, and recognition, and money, covetousness. Somebody talking about, somebody was talking about preaching uh, 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 money and uh, the blessings of God, monetary blessings. Oh, in Colossians it says, uh, covetousness is idolatry. And covetousness is simply a strong desire. You can covet the things of God, and covetousness is not wrong. But, but when you go to coveting the things of the world, and money, and houses, and cars, and jobs, and all of that, the covetousness becomes idolatry. And that's when that other spirit is going to come in and take you by the hand and lead you in places that you did not ever intend to go. Another spirit. Draw nigh to God, He'll draw nigh to you. God is the Spirit of truth, Spirit of God, Spirit of holiness, discerning spirits, not know what spirit you're of. <laughs> love, because they had not a love of the truth. Second Thessalonians 2 and 10, Brother King, because they had not a love of the truth. The Holy Ghost is a Spirit of truth. You're going to love truth if you got the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter how hard it is. It doesn't matter how plain it is. It don't matter what you've got to give up. You're going to love the Spirit of truth. If you've got the Spirit of truth, you're going to love truth. Amen. With all deceivableness, With all deceivableness of, of unrighteousness, unrighteousness in them that, that perish, perish. Because, because they received not. They did not have a... Love of the, the truth. truth. When you quit loving truth, compromising comes from not loving truth. Letting down on your holiness standards comes from not loving truth. And that other... Spirit is going to take you down the jewelry and pantsuits. I don't know. Can I can I tell you what it's like in Kansas? We fight in the battle of the elbow. The battle of the elbow. Always been three quarter length sleeves. I've been uh, I've been there twenty eight years. Been superintendent twenty three years. I know. I was there when it happened. Saw most of them guys come in there. No oh God, I've put them in churches and put them in buildings. 
Be careful now. I'll be getting careful now. <laughs> I better turn this dial over to sweet again now. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. They got in trouble in other districts, and I had to go to headquarters to get them out of trouble. My God, I got a long, long list. In, in Kansas, there's been over a hundred men come and go since the 28 years that I've been there. I, I got a hold of the old, uh, the old directory one time and I counted over a hundred preachers that had come and gone from that district in the 28 years that I've been there. My God have mercy. And it's always been three quarter inch sleeve length on a woman and a lady. And oh, all of a sudden, it's to the elbow. To the elbow. Now when it's to the elbow, it gets one-eighth of an inch above the elbow. And who's going to come out with a tape measure and measure one-eighth of an inch? So then it gets to be a half inch. It gets to be an inch above the inch. And then it just runs up their arm. And the first thing you know, you got a halter. My God have mercy. We're fighting a battle of the elbow. I don't know whether you're fighting that here or not. <laughs> oh, God. It goes little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little. It sneaks in. Here a little and there a little. Oh, my God. Sister Westberg and I, Sister Westberg and I was, we was coming home from somewhere in a van and that woman was nearly in tears. She said, them hairdos, brother, she said, they're getting so wild. She said, it's driving me crazy. And she said, I said, woman, I said, I don't know what you want. But I said, you tell me what you want, and I said, they'll do it. Now, we got a diverse uh, culture. So we got two black women, two white women, two Hispanics. And had a meeting. Come up with an apostolic hair policy. And those women said it. There was about a dozen of them all together. They set this apostolic hair policy. The do's and the don'ts. And they had pictures. You'd stay out of them women's magazines. You'd be a whole lot better off. Hey, we don't care what to do. Let the lesbians and the queers go ahead with their style. We don't care. We're going to be apostolic. Let the lesbians and the queers go to hell. We're going to be apostolic. Go ahead. Uh, and I said, now, oh, Brother King, you'd have been proud of me that night. I got that apostolic hair. Oh, I had copy after copy after copy after copy. I got up. And I said, uh, I said, anybody here want to go to a charismatic church? If you do, stand up. Nobody moved. I said, good thing you didn't. I'd have sent you out tonight. I'd have given you your heart's desire tonight. I said, now, is there a woman here that thinks I won't throw her out over her hair? Would you stand up? Nobody moved. I said, good thing you didn't. I'd have thrown you out tonight. I said, now, ushers. I said, pass out this apostolic hair policy. If you come to a woman that don't want one, just stop and raise your hand and look down at her. Everybody got a copy of the apostolic hair policy policy now it got a little tight had to in the Christian school we had to send a few in the restroom to redo their hair pulled them in out of the Sunday school and sent them in the restroom to do redo their hair but I'm going to tell you this old man is too old to run scared and my God it's going to be right or else All right. All right. or else and the alternative is awesome. I ain't going to tell you what the or else is because the alternative is awesome. Oh, God, I'm too old to run scared. My 
God, Sister Westberg got up, what was, Sunday night. She said, I want ten minutes. And she got up and she pulled out some stuff. She said, I said, you need to stay out of Walmart. And them things was creeping in a little bit here and a little bit there. And I said, you need to stay out of Walmart and them boutiques. Now, you can go down to Sally's Boutique. That's the Salvation Army. Salvation Army, Sally's Boutique. That's where a lot of my folks get their clothes in Sally's Boutique. That's the Salvation Army. Oh, God. But you need to keep your mind and your eyes out of them magazines. Quit looking in them store windows. Oh, God. That's where it's coming from. That world out there. Seducing spirits coming out of the world and attacking the apostolic church. But you've got to discern the Spirit and you've got to learn to rebuke the Spirit. And if you can't rebuke the Spirit, let your pastor rebuke it for you and lay hands on you and cast that Spirit out of you. Now, I'm trying, I'm not sending people to hell. I'm trying to save people. God called me to save people, not send people to hell. I love people. I, I, hey, hey, I, I married them people and, and they, they had kids and the kids grew up. Now I'm marrying their kids. Boy, that's a blessing to the king. I've been there 28 years. I prayed them through and baptized them and married them. They had them kids. Now the kids are grown up and I'm marrying the kids. Oh. Loving people. Hey, I'm going to tell you the truth if I love you. I'm not going to love you into hell. I'm going to love you into heaven. I'm going to love you into heaven. I'm going to tell you what it takes because I love you. Because I love you. Oh, God. Discerning of spirits. Everybody stand. I'm going to quit. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Would you... I don't know how you do things up here in the Maple Leaf country. And I know there's a good crowd here tonight. But if you want to dedicate yourself to being led by the Spirit of God, I want you to come up here and stand. Don't kneel down. Don't kneel down. Just come up here and stand. If you are going to discern the spirits, make sure it's the Spirit of God, and you want to be led by the Spirit of God, I want you preachers to come up here on the background, on the platform. That Brother Zabala, come on up here. Come on up here. Brother Dehon. come on. Brother Campbell. So good to have Brother Campbell. I've preached in his church in Florida so many times. I, I forgot how many. He's a, he's a great fella. Come on. Come on. Uh, now, I, I, I'm going to get you as close as I can. And I, I'm going I'm gonna, to I'm gonna have these men pray with me. I, I just feel like that, that we're going to have a wonderful time at this, at this camp meeting. And, and we're going to rebuke every spirit. We're going to drive every spirit out of here that don't belong here. And, and my God, I, I want you to raise your hands right now toward heaven. All of you that want to be led of the Spirit, you don't want to be led off by another spirit. I want you men to walk down there and just touch them and pray. And lay hands on them. Come on. My God, my God, my God. In the name of Jesus, we ask you now, oh God, overshadow this lovely people. Let your divine presence be here in our midst tonight. Overshadow them. Move upon them right now. Open their ears and heart and their mind and their understanding to the Word of God. Speak to them. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every foul spirit. Rebuke every seducing spirit. Jesus, we ask you now, lead this people in the way of righteousness and truth. Uh, anoint Brother King with a divine anointing to lead this wonderful people in the right direction. Oh, God, touch Brother King with a divine anointing to lead this people. Oh, God, we love you tonight. We thank you, God. We praise you for your mercy.